Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beasts Stone Block 3 with another tutorial Let's Play video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we created ourselves an encased fan. We then used that fan to wash some sand that got us some gold and some copper. The reason we wanted the gold and the copper is that we're going to need that to complete our melter, casting, and smeltery quests. And before I forget though, one other thing that we created last episode was the mechanical press. This just happens to be a quest on the create tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get that random reward right there. We got a flux controller, not super useful for us for today. But before we get started, now would be a great time to click on that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time I post a new video to my channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support, click on the join button down below. Check out the perks I've got available for my community members. Alternately, you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link down below in the description. But enough about that. Let's get back to the video. So to build our smeltery and our melter, we're going to need some seared bricks. To make seared bricks, we are going to need some grout. To make grout, it is one block of clay, four blocks of sand, and four blocks of gravel. Alternately, you can make a two per recipe with just one clay ball, one sand, and one gravel. So I'm going to take that out of there. Now to convert this grout into seared bricks, we're going to have to find a way to cook it. Our first option is just to use a regular furnace. I'm going to pop one in there. Once it's cooked, it's going to get us a single seared brick. There you go. We've got one seared brick. I'm going to add it to the couple of other ones that I've done previously. Now, one for one is not bad. Once we make our melter, we can actually process the grout at one for two. So that means each piece of grout will end up getting us two seared bricks. So I'm going to hold on to the rest of this until we've got our melter made and then use the melter to double up our production. So jumping into the quest book again, to make the melter, we are first going to have to make a seared melter, and then we're also going to have to make a seared heater. So one of the components for the melter is going to be a seared ingot gauge, which is five pieces of glass in an X shape or four seared bricks. Alternately, you can rotate this recipe so that it is a plus sign of glass and the four seared bricks in the corner. That gets you a seared fuel gauge. Both of these work perfectly well, so it doesn't really matter which one that you choose. We're going to take the seared fuel gauge, put it into a crafting table with five seared bricks in the half U shape. That gets us our seared melter. To heat up the seared melter though, we're going to need a heat source. The simplest of which is the seared heater. Now I normally don't go with the seared heater. It's not our best option. Building yourself a seared tank, filling that tank with lava and using that as a heat source is a lot more efficient than the seared heater is. But for this quest, we've got to build a seared heater anyways. So Eight seared bricks in a circle in a crafting table gets you the seared heater. And there you go, quest complete melter. Let's go jump in there. We'll click on that quest. Random reward, seared bricks. Okay, actually that is very, very convenient. I'm very happy about that. Puny smelting is a book on smelting. Uh, it only gave us four seared bricks, so it's not not super, super amount. I was kind of hoping for like half a stack or something like that. But the puny smelting, we're going to go open that up. This is your guide to early tinkering. So this is our second step of tinkering. We built the tables previously. We made ourselves a stone pickaxe. Now we can start using our melter to create other parts and pieces, which are going to really improve our tools. Now, before we set up the melter, though, there's a couple of other pieces that we've got to make. That's going to be part of quest two, the casting quest. So since our melter melts resources, we're going to need something for our molten products to be poured onto. One of which can be a seared casting table that is seven seared bricks in a N shape. Or we can use a casting basin that is seven seared bricks in a U shape. Now, the last thing we need to set up our melter is going to be some seared faucets. You're going to want one of these for each of your outputs. Three seared bricks in a crafting table actually gets us three of these. So let's go set up the seared melter in our world. First off, we're going to place down the heater. We're going to take the seared melter. We're going to go place that on top. And then I'm going to take the seared casting table. I'm going to put it on the side and then I'm going to put the casting basin off to the other side. Now you could actually place it out into the front. I think you can actually place it into the back for demonstration purposes here. I'm just putting one off to each side. So it's kind of easier to see. We're going to take the faucet. We're going to go place one of those above each of our basins or tables. And then all that's left for us to do is throw a fuel source into our uh, heater and then a meltable product into our melter. So for starters, let's go, we'll go throw the three gold in there. That's going to be important for our next step. 
Oh, one second here. I've got a loot B. So I figured out the reason we had problems with them last time. And that is because you're not supposed to kill them. Uh, you got to wait for them to drop their resources. There we go. So can we keep you... Let's just keep you trapped in here. I'm going to go light up this area. Because I don't want anything spawning in it. We're just going to keep you trapped here until you drop your resources for us. Well, there we go. We got an iron ingot. We got a battery. Uh, we got another crystal chest. That's actually going to come in handy. Uh, we got a flower. We got some copper ingots. We got another egg. And what was that last item? Another iron ingot. Okay, so that's not too, too bad. So again, a couple of episodes ago, I came across one. I killed it. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. You got to wait for them to drop their resources. All right, so back to the smelter. You can see my gold is melted here. The three pieces of gold we put in there has given us four ingots. That's because the melter melts at a 1.33333 production rate. So be careful when you're filling it up with certain items. You can check the output process on the melting tab in the JEI. So raw gold makes one ingot and three nuggets. Whereas with the grout, one grout makes two full stone bricks. So not everything is going to be the same. Be aware of what you're putting into it. Next up, we're going to work on some casts. Now, if we make a gold cast, that's going to be a permanent cast. We can use it over and over. But if we're just doing something one off, a simple sand cast will be more than sufficient. So as an example, one sand in a crafting table will get you four blank sand casts. We can then take one of those sand casts, throw it on our casting table there, and say I wanted to make a cast of a brick. We're going to go put a any brick in there, pull it back out. We've now got a sand cast of a brick. Click on that faucet. And as soon as that cools down, the cast goes away. We've got the ingots left behind, which is good for one off things. But, you know, for something like ingots, which we're going to be using over and over again, we're much better off creating ourselves a proper gold cast. So again, I'm going to take a brick. I'm going to put it into our casting table. And then this time I'm going to pour gold over top of the brick. Now, while it consumes the brick, we are left behind with a proper gold cast. We can put that in there. We can go pour more some molten gold in there. Once it's done, we can go right click it. That cast remains behind for the next item. Now, I'm all for automation. One thing we can do to streamline this whole process is if we cut some holes in the floor underneath the casting table, we can go take a couple of chests. I like doing a double chest just because it's, you know, saves on space. And then we're going to go take a regular hopper and then we're just going to go place it facing into that chest. Now, when we cast an item, once it's done, it automatically gets pulled into that chest. So that's good for our output. As far as input goes, what we can do is we can take a hopper. I'm going to put it facing into the back. I'll explain why in a second. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go place a chest above that. Now we can go throw all of our items into the chest they'll get pushed down into the melter. Keeping in mind the rule of three, I got to pull one of these out there. I almost forgot about that. As they melt up, they're going to stay in the melter. What we want to do is take, let's actually use the seared bricks. We're going to put it next to the chest there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to build ourselves a lever. To make a lever, it is just one cobblestone, one stick, just a vanilla recipe. We're going to take that lever. We're going to put it over top of the seared faucet. Now, when we switch that on, that seared faucet becomes active and it's automatically going to pour whatever's in the melter into the casting basin. If we want to turn it off, we just go flip it off. Once it's done, no more is being pushed through there. So I'm going to go throw that copper up there. We're going to go turn that on. It's going to go process the rest of this gold. And then once that's done, it's going to start processing the copper. So we're going to go one, we're going to go two, and I'm actually going to turn this off right now. And as you can see, our seared heater is now empty. We've got material in here that's not being uh, cooked. Now we can go out, find some more coal, make some more charcoal, do a bunch of other things to fill up the seared heater. I'm not a big fan of the seared heater. I recommend converting it right up to a seared tank as soon as you can. So to make a seared tank, it is eight seared bricks 
in a crafting table with one piece of glass in the middle. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm actually going to make that second recipe. I wasn't going to do them together, but for this demonstration, I think it's probably important that we do. I'm going to go place these two in the middle here. It doesn't really matter where you place them in your world, but we can now fill these up with a liquid heat source. The easiest of which right now is going to be lava. So to get limited amounts of lava in our world, we can use something called a fire plow. Now to make a fire plow, it is two sticks in a crafting table in a diagonal pattern that gets us our fire plow. And all we need to do is look at a solid stone block. This won't work on cobblestone. It's got to be your regular stone. Right click, hold it, and bingo, we got some lava. Right click, hold it. Bingo, we got some lava. Right click, hold it. Bingo, we got some lava. Now, each one of these sticks has enough power to do four solid source blocks of lava. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go take a scoop of lava right out there with our bucket and then four source blocks of lava will fill up one of these seared tanks. Now I'm going to go make one more of these sticks and we're going to do four more pieces of lava. And there you go. That's broken. We're going to go one, two, three, and four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these seared tanks. We're going to come back over here. We're going to go place that in our world underneath the seared melter. It is now being powered by lava. It's a much, much better heat source than any sort of solid fuel would be. So as you can see, our melter is full of copper. That's perfect because we're going to have to use a little bit of copper to build the next two items. I did make two copper ingots earlier. So if we open up our quest book again, oh, there's our random reward for our casting. Let's go grab that. A cooking pot. All right. That might come in handy. I'm not too sure. But the last quest of the day is the smeltery. Now we're 50% done. Seared bricks is one of the recipes that we needed as well as a seared tank. We're also going to have to make a smeltery controller and a seared drain. So for your information, seared bricks are four seared bricks in a crafting table gets you seared bricks. These are going to be important for building your full on smeltery. But we're also going to need one to build our seared drain. To make the seared drain, we're going to go place one of those seared bricks in our casting basin. And then we're going to right click on that. It's going to pour, I think it's four ingots of molten copper into our seared casting basin. We're going to right click that. And there you go. We've now got our smeltery controller. I've got all this excess molten copper in here though. To get rid of it, I'm just going to turn that back on. It's going to go continuously make all of these seared bricks. So while that's emptying out, now would actually be a good time to fill it up with some more grout. We're going to need an absolute ton of these seared bricks. And like I showed earlier, the melter actually doubles the grout. So this is a good opportunity to get two out of each of those grout rather than the one that we were getting from the furnace. We've got one other thing to build, and that's going to be a seared drain. And actually, I need two more seared bricks to do that. So in a crafting table, four seared bricks and two copper ingots gets us a seared drain. And there you go, quest complete smeltery. We're gonna open up that quest tab, random reward, what is that? I don't even know, redstone flux cell frame. Okay, that's way ahead of what we're doing. And then we get a melt, mighty smelting book. So if we open this up quickly, we can go scan through it. This basically shows us how to set up our smeltery uh, as well as some of the higher level items that you can craft using it. One of the things that the smeltery does that the melter doesn't, there's another loop bee already. Oh, he's actually in my base right here, I think. Yeah, so <laughs> one thing I discovered is these bees like to go up as high as possible, which is a little annoying, which is one of the reasons I tried to trap him earlier. All right, there we go. Another chest. We got a flower. Another chest, actually, this is really good. This will be very handy. Another egg, another flower, chance cube. Oh, it looks like raw gold, maybe? Another copper ingot and a basic pipe upgrade. So that's, that guy gave us a bunch of stuff. Not everything we can use. Let's head back to finish this off. I got to stop getting distracted by these guys. Okay, we are back. I've left this running in the background. We've produced a whole bunch of seared bricks. I use those bricks to make some more of these seared bricks. 
Alternately, what we could have been doing is pouring the seared stone directly into a casting basin. That'll get you a seared block. I think the seared bricks look a lot nicer than the seared blocks do, but whatever method you want to do to produce those blocks is totally up to you. Now, I also moved my little hole in the floor here over by one. That's so I've got a little bit more space to work on the side. I'm working on a three by three just because it's going to kind of fit my room. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to place a floor of seared bricks and then we're going to place a wall around it. Now, the nice thing about the smeltery is that you do not need the walls to be on top of the floor. You can actually leave a space in between them. Now from here, I'm going to take the smeltery controller. I'm going to put it out front. I'm going to take a seared fuel tank, put it onto the side, and then we're going to take one more seared bricks. We're going to click it in there. And we've now got a technically functioning smeltery. I'm limited in spaces because we're only one high with the three by three, which gives us nine. But I also don't have any way to get the fluids out yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple more blocks and then we're going to go build a second level on here. And then over on this side is where I'm going to place my seared drains. Now I built two extra ones. We're going to go one, two, three. And as you see, as soon as that is complete, this opens up showing that is a valid placement. If there's something wrong with your smeltery, that's going to remain closed. We don't want that. We want to see these open. So from here, I'm going to go place the seared table. I'm going to place the seared casting basin. And then we're going to go place a faucet on each of our outputs that we've got a, you know, a, a place to pour them in here. We can build another table. We can build another casting basin, whatever we want for this third one. Alternately on these corner pieces, we can put the ones in here as well. But for the purpose of this video, these two will be perfect. Now, when we're melting items in the smeltery, it's the exact same as it is with the melter. Be careful what you're putting in there. So for example, if we were to throw this raw gold into the melter, we get the one ingot and the three nuggets. That's the exact same for the smeltery as well. So if you're gonna be processing in there, stick with your rule of three when it comes to your metals. Alternately, you can take an already processed product like the ingot and throw that in there instead. That way you're controlling exactly how much fluid's in there. You're not gonna end up with anything extra. Also, when you're putting items into your smeltery, be careful what you're putting together. If you want gold, be careful that you're not putting something like copper in it, which is actually gonna be an alloy. So you can see that gold and that copper instantly changed into rose gold. Now that's what I wanted to do for this demonstration, but it might not be the resource that you want from there. So. The melter is great for keeping individual items separate. The smeltery is great for doing bulk items and for alloying. And you know what? It sounds like, yeah, that's out of lava there. So what we can do is we can take our cast here. We can go throw it on our casting table over here. We can now pour out that rose gold uh, ingot. There you go. And very, very similar to our, you know, melter over here. We can automate it. We can throw some hoppers underneath it and some chests, all perfectly valid for using the smelter. As we go up with more complicated items, we can make this a lot more efficient. And by building more levels, we can keep more blocks in it at a time. But you know what? This one's been a really, really long uh, video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys found it useful. I'll see you guys next time. Good boy.